Damon Moore. Hey, JT. Thanks for taking the time to join us today. Obviously, you've, uh, you're getting a lot of experience in MLS this season, and probably not only are, are you adapting you know, to, to what you're seeing, but, uh, but the league is also in some ways adapting to you. Last season, it felt like you had a, a lot more open space to be able to use your feet and really help the team uh, improve playing out of the back. This season, it does feel like teams are trying to either press you harder uh, to try to force you to make decisions, or they kind of sit back, wait for you to make your move, and then try to win win second balls and try to step to balls. We saw a bit of that against Houston uh, this past past week. What do you kind of take from these experiences, and, and how do you see that your game may need to evolve and adapt, you know, based upon these different types of pressures that you're facing from defenses this season? Thanks. <clears throat> yeah, that's a great question. I think just trying to take it uh, game by game. Uh, we obviously look at film and <clears throat> see how the opposing team presses, see what their defensive shape is like. Um, when I'm on the ball, when we have the ball in the midfield, uh, when we're attacking in the final third. Um, but it's obviously game by game. Uh, you don't totally know what's gonna, gonna happen. You can have a, a good idea by watching their film, but then they can do some, something completely different. Um, I think last year with the, the shortened schedule and it was all kind of out of whack, um, teams weren't pressing as high. Uh, just because of there is games every three days, whereas this year it's a little bit more back to normal schedule. Um, obviously, we've had a running games of kind of three games in a week, but yeah, I think just trying to evolve and watch film after every game myself, um, take the good, take the bad, and kind of learn from learn from every experience and take everything as a lesson. Um, really fortunate that the coaching staff um, is one where you can risk things, you can make mistakes, um, and they have your back. It's the way Matias wants to play and. Um, I'm just trying to get better every game. Thank you, JT. Uh, this question comes from Chris Dangerfield. He says the Quakes will be facing the league's top scorer in Raul Ruiz Diaz. What will you and the defenders in front of you need to do to keep him quiet on Saturday? Yeah, I mean, we'll watch the film of him. We've played him so much. We've played Sounders uh, so much over the past three years that we definitely uh, have a pretty good idea of how they're going to play and uh, what what kind of system they have. It's it's new this year and they've um, clearly done very well at it, but um, I know they've had some injuries and uh, a tough result this past game against Minnesota. So gonna watch film of that and uh, watch film of the previous game that we played at home against them. Uh, obviously it was, that was a pretty weird game and um, I think we should have taken at least some points from that game. But yeah, I think we're really confident going in. Obviously we've had some unfortunate results. Um, I think we've been doing the little things a lot better and uh, we're just gonna need to continue to do that too. Um, I guess anybody who plays. Doesn't matter if it's Sounders, doesn't matter if um, it's any other team in the league. We, we always go in with the mentality that we're going to win the game and uh, really press the opponent. Thank you. Next question comes from Marko Yukolovic. Hey, JT. Um, you know, you guys have uh, points in four consecutive games, but, you know, these last two seem like you should have had three points in those last two games. So what's what's the confidence in the move with the team right now heading into Saturday against Seattle, uh, knowing that, you know, you guys probably should have had six points in, in these last two games instead of two points? And also, uh, a second question to follow up is just, how, do you feel like you are facing more shots now ever since uh, Matias changed the formation? Uh, it seems like you're getting five, six uh, saves a game. Yeah, I think to... To answer your first question, I think the confidence is really high in the locker room. Um, I think we've been playing well, the, the results will come. Um, I think one thing that Matias always tries to focus on is not not just focusing on the results. Uh, we want to focus on how we play and, and the matter in which we play. Um, really unfortunate against Sporting not to get three points. Obviously, it's uh, tough on his goalkeeper when it goes off your back, but it uh, kind of is what it is. And then against Houston, um, I think I could have done a little bit better on the goal as well. But uh, again, unlucky to have the offside goal at the end. But yeah, I think the confidence is really high. We know we're playing much better than we were, and uh, we're continuing to grow as a team and grow as uh, a unit. Um, and then secondly, um, I think with the shots, I don't know. I, I'm just trying to out there just trying to do my job. Um, if they come to me, then I'm, I try to make the save, but I don't think it uh, has anything to do with the formation change or, or anything like that. I think it's just uh, some games there's more shots, some games there's not, because against Colorado, I think I only had one save. Um, whereas the next game I had had more than that, so you know every every game's different. It uh, doesn't really matter formation. Just just try, out there trying to do my job and help the team win. Thank you, JT. We're going to take two more questions, starting with John Rojas. 
Thanks, Jake. JT, uh, I want your opinion on the turf. I mean, how much does it actually affect the games, your game, in, in particular your position? And this turf in Seattle, we all know is different than the one in Portland. So how do you guys go about it? Yeah, it is what it is. Um, I mean, the ball bounces a little bit differently and uh, maybe it's a little bit stickier. I know it's going to be a midday game, so it might be a little bit hotter, but, um, you know, both teams play on it. Yeah, I don't think it's that big of a deal and we'll adjust just fine. I make sure to pack the right boots, but besides that, I think it's uh, something that we don't really worry about. Thank you. One final question comes from Chris Dangerfield. He asks, how is your communication with Alanis and Nathan uh, with the obvious language barrier? Yeah, uh, they actually, they both speak really, really uh, good English. And so there really is no language barrier uh, on the team. I think everybody speaks either a little, little bit English or a little bit of Spanish. So we always have pretty good com communication on the field. Um, obviously during tense moments, it's a little bit um, more difficult to hear, to hear each other. But um, I try to speak as much Spanish as I can, even though they definitely understand English. And um, yeah, language barrier isn't really too much an issue. Perfect. Thank you, JT, and good luck on Saturday. Thank you, guys.